Welcome to lectures and interviews about leadership for sustainability. I'm Bruce Hall. I want to talk about greening the economy, perhaps the biggest challenge we sustainability challenge we face, bigger than climate, water, food and ag, biodiversity. I mean, this is the challenge as we welcome in several billion people into the middle class, uh, meeting their material needs. It's, it's a huge challenge. We live on a finite world. There's only so much to go around. Uh, this is the solution we need to the Malthusian challenge of running out of resources. So uh, we let's dig into it. One of the big tr three choices we have is to is to transform this economy remarkably transform how we think about it from the linear economy to, to a circular economy the linear economy is the take make waste uh, progression of, of resources through our economy uh, the the circular economy uses those waste entirely the products are redesigned so everything is reincorporated into the into the new material into the new products it's it's, it's dramatic transformation it's going to require a lot of work that we'll get into here in a little bit the, the next choice is to reform the linear economy that we already have capitalism is incredibly efficient and it, it keeps making things with less resources and makes them better makes them last longer makes them with fewer people. It, you know, it's a remarkable over time how we've extended resources, found replacements, and, and made things with less material. And we can continue to do that. The, the third choice is to change aban or abandon a capitalist economy so that we go back to a, a steady state or a simpler times or a post-consumer, post-material economy. Uh, I think that it would be revolutionary and very difficult to do, uh, and, and especially since there are so many billions of people that don't have flexibility toilets and light bulbs or floors or motorcycles or refrigerators or washing machines. You know, there's just so much material needs left in this world. So these are the three big choices we face. And I've given you uh, eight options in this assignment to uh, reflect on and, 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 and help you think through the choices you have. The rose in green represent the circular economy, the rose in orange, pink, whatever that second layer is, is reflects the reform of the linear economy and then the blue of course is the abandonment of that revolutionary abandonment of the of the of capitalism so let's let me just work through the green ones first uh, the, the redesign uh, of products and production as, as my biggest allocation I think that's by far the biggest challenge it's it's the one thing that we really do not know how to do it's going to require a tremendous amount of investment uh, be in figuring out how to, how to redesign our production lines redesign how the products are designed uh, because basically we've got we've got to make products that can be disassembled and the, and the materials that are in them that can be reused right those materials don't go anywhere we're never going to run out of materials we just they're just they're always going to be here we just need to figure out how they can be disassembled and, 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 and made in a way that can be reused completely in, in the products that we're making. That's, that's a huge uh, engineering uh, firm hu uh, challenge, a huge material science challenge, a huge business and, and productions challenge. Um, and, and it's, it's going to be risky. Uh, it's going to require some government intervention, I think, to uh, give loans, uh, taxes, tax breaks, and, and what have you. Perhaps it might require a little bit of regulation to incentivize people. But at some point in time, just because there's so much money involved here, uh, there's so much money that's going to be made, trillions of dollars are the estimates that are, are, are going to be made by people that can actually control their supply chain and get these resources back in to, from the consumers into the, into the new product rather than having to rely on virgin materials and all the risk and disruptions of the supply chain. So if the companies can control their supply chains, it's going to, be, going to bring massive economic rewards. So the next big thing is to is some kind of new business model, some new way of interacting with consumers because we've, we're going to have to resell things as consumers to the next people that can use it. We're going to have to find ways to, to, to keep those relationships between businesses and consumers alive. And there are all kinds of new models out there uh, for resale and reuse, uh, but there are also new kinds of models for how consumers think about the, their themselves. They're not necessarily owners of things, they're renters of things. They have a very different relationship with the, with, with the business. And that's going to also require a lot of, a lot of new thinking, a lot of, a lot of rework. Uh, and, and, and businesses are going to be great at this, but, and we've got some examples of, of how it's being done with, you know, with Uber and Airbnb and other ways that products are being shared or, or reused. But that, that's going to be a tremendous um, challenge and, and, and way of rethinking. The last big uh, uh, 
we'll need to provide some funding for bio-based materials. Uh, there will be some materials we just can't recycle. They're either too expensive, uh, take too much energy, or too many catalysts, or for whatever reason, it, it takes too much to, to disassemble them in an affordable way. And we'll need to replace them with uh, with bio-based materials of some sort. Certainly there are the you know, the big two, which are cement and steel. We just use so much of both of those that they each contribute about seven or eight percent of the total greenhouse gases. So there, they'll be a big challenge. And wood is, you know, is a, is a bio-based material substitute in some situations. Uh, we tend to really get obsessed about plastics. And I think uh, sometimes it, you know, it's important to, to, to replace plastics when, uh, with bio-based materials. And that's, that's certainly possible and increasingly so. But it's not really the big the big issue. There's just so few plastics. We tend to obsess about plastic bottles and straws and whatnot. And, you know, that seem there is a lot of it in the, in the environment, and we need to figure out a way to deal with it better. Uh, but it, but relative to some of these other materials, it, it might not be the heaviest lift. All right, let me shift to the next three rows: uh, the safe e extraction of new materials, uh, certification standards, and household recycling. There, these are all reformist strategies to improve the efficiency and the continuation of the capitalist system. All critical. I, I put a fair bit of money in exploration and safe extraction of resources just because there's just so much more stuff that we're going to have to make. Again, there are billions of people moving into the global middle class. It's going to take dozens of years, score of years to, to make the transformation to a circular economy, even if it's possible. So we need some way to extract more materials. And the resources that we are extracting now are in, in, you know, becoming more difficult and dangerous, right? Think of Deepwater Horizon and, and what was lost there. Well, you know, we're going we're gonna to be getting more out of the ocean floor. We might have to make the mines even larger than they're already made. And, and that's going to disrupt societies nearby. It's going to cause erosion and pollution. Well, we might have to go off planet to, to asteroids. These, these are all incredibly risky. So we need some way to do it safely. And there's going to be an enormous amount of resources that we're going to continue to extract. And so let's figure out how to do it well, do it safely, do it in a way uh, that respects life and, and the rest of the world. Okay, the next row is certification and standards. And these are really two different things. I lump them together under uh, conscious consumerism, but in part because it, the idea is that with consumer-driven demand, the market may shift. Uh, the, but they're really two different things. Let me, let me tease them apart. Certification is use of labels and other strategies to communicate to consumers so that they increase the demand that then drives the, the, the businesses to, to change how they're, how they're doing how they're doing production and uh, presumably one in every three consumers would buy a product that's sustainable as long as it is the same quality and price as a, as a other product but I'm not real um, confident that this is a, a, a viable strategy consumers are fickle uh, they're overwhelmed by different sources of information there's just so many com competing different types of labels many of the labels don't mean much at all and so we, we need we need other ways to, to do this. And, and one of the better ways is with standards. These are sort of voluntary standards uh, developed by industry. So industries will get together, literally or sit around a round table uh, with government partners and with NGOs, and they'll negotiate what are the best practices that make things sustainable. And there will oftentimes be a label or some kind of certification that goes along with this. Uh, but it, it's, they're voluntary standards that transmit best practices through the supply chains of all these suppliers, and it, it will transform the way products are made. And if there are bad actors that undercut the good actors, uh, you know, that don't subscribe to these policies, then there might be a role for government to then use these voluntary strategies as regulatory apparatus to then require the bad actors to, to, to do the sustainable practices, or in this case, the circular economy practices. And, and, and so everybody's on a level playing field. And, and that's important because if it's not a level playing field, then the, the good actors that are using the circular economy practices will be undercut by by price, uh, by the bad actors. So this is critical. Standards are a way to do this. And there are lots of examples from soybeans to clothing to, to metals to livestock uh, to, to mining. All and, right, the last reformist strategy is household recycling. And you can see I gave it no no, no love at all. Uh, and uh, that's a very intentional uh, allocation to get your attention. Uh, yes, we need to do household recycling. Each of us should uh, 
do our part to minimize the waste and, and maximize recycling. But basically, household recycling, and I'm very specific here in the reading, this is household recycling, is, uh, I call it a balm for middle-class guilt. It, it does more harm than good, likely. There are a few products that can be recycled, aluminum, uh, and and some plastics, but you know, basically, uh, we're just putting the stuff out by the mailbox uh, and puffing our chest up when when to make sure our you know when our our pile of recycles is, is better than our neighbors, and and then we go out and drive our car or eat eat meat or take a jet airplane to some Caribbean resort, and you know we we engage in this rebound effect that uh, because we feel like we're doing our part, we don't need to do any more, and we can reward ourselves. Uh, it's just study after study after study that this uh, the consumer household recycling is minimal in terms of the impact it has. We need to recycle materials back in how they're designed and how things are produced, but at the post-consumer society, at the post-consumer stage, it's really not, it doesn't have that much of an impact. Uh, once we get a circular economy going, once we have a place for all these resources to go, then post-consumer recycling at the household will really make a difference. But right now, you know, we use more energy energy, go picking this stuff up. A lot of it just goes right to the landfill. This rebound effect of, of feeling like I deserve to do something better uh, is, is deeply problematic. It's why I call it bomb for middle class guilt. It's potentially a foot in the door that, it, you know, if you get somebody to do one thing, like, okay, I'm going to recycle, then maybe, well, that yeah, wasn't too hard and I feel good. Maybe I should do something else. I should change my diet. Uh, I should vote for a green, a green politician. Maybe I donate money to an environmental cause. You know, maybe work uh, in my business to, to change the way it's doing its work. And, and so as a foot in the door, it might lead to something else. Uh, but I worry that household recycling, certainly as it's currently envisioned, is mostly a balm and, 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 and triggers the rebound effect. I've talked too much about it, but it's a, it's a, it's a soapbox I get up on. Uh, and you can tell that from the readings. All right, let's, let's conclude by talking about uh, changing the economy tremendously, uh, ref, uh, a revolution, if you will, abandoning consumer demand, uh, abandoning the consumerist materialist lifestyle. I, I think it, it's, it's easier to suggest this might be a possibility if you're living a pretty privileged middle-class American lifestyle with lots of stuff. I mean, I, I, I feel like I could I don't need any more stuff and I'd be comfortable. But we have to recognize that there are literally billions of people in this world that need more stuff. And so ethically, we got to figure a way, a way to provide it. Uh, and also, if we want to continue to end poverty, we need to figure out a way to grow the economy. The key to, to ending poverty is not distributioning wealth, but rather making the pie bigger. Uh, and there's more to go around. And, and, and we can end poverty that way. And that, that means economic growth. So we need to reconfigure how we grow the economy. And a circular economy will continue to grow, we'll continue, people will continue to prosper, we'll continue to have new innovations, new solutions, uh, new things, uh, but they'll just be made out of the old material uh, that will be reincorporated in these new things with new services and, and, and better features. Uh, so the circular economy, a powerful um, way to re-envision uh, how, how, we, how we do business, uh, and how we are consumers, uh, and how we are citizens. And it's going to require all, all our work and a lot of investment by government and certainly a lot of work by business and, and, uh, and, and others um, in the civil society like the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So go to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation if you don't know much about the circular economy uh, and, and see what they've got to say. Uh, and um, good luck with this assignment.